district report. Uh, did I skip you, Bob? Yes. yes. <laughs> but I didn't feel offended. <laughs> 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 that 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 I'm, happy, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> okay. I thought that Are you waiting for a motion? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I will not refer to any page numbers. <laughs> or lines. Thank you. Or RSA. The district really has had a very productive year. Uh, the reintroduction of the new parking lot has generated the highest level of parking revenues in the history of the district. We are in the process at this time of looking into the possibility of improving the sound system for the seashell stage for the 90 performances that are held there each year. It's fairly complicated. It's hard to say whether we'll get there. We are also looking into <clears throat> having a float in the Experience Hampton Parade in December, <coughs> representing the district on the theory that of bridging the town and the district. Uh, the high school musical people are now annually coming to the beach to perform. If we go to the town at the Experience Hampton Parade, it's kind of cross-pollinating in a positive way. We're also getting into a series of monthly informational presentations by speakers uh, involving flood insurance issues, evacuation issues. At our next meeting, the chair of the Conservation Commission will be present, and we probably will invite the Zoning Board, Planning Board uh, representatives to come to a meeting and explain their function. Uh, so these are kind of the things in the direction we're heading in at this time. It seems to be fairly well received by the residents of the district. Uh, uh, Bob, what I want to suggest is, Jaden is, you've got them coming to a meeting. There's over 2,000 houses in the floodplain on, uh, affected by FEMA. And what Jay is trying, he's working with the town to get the statistics so we can get the discounts. I would, I'd suggest somebody from the beach precinct join the committee, join Jay. Well, we, we will talk to him when he comes to the meeting. I'm also going to a meeting he invited me to on the same day as our uh, November meeting. Uh, and if, if that's his wish, we'll yeah. Yeah, I went to uh, a meeting in Seabrook where Jay was there and the state did a presentation on the flood insurance and how to get the credits. You know, it can be substantial. The only few towns that qualify to get the credits because they have to do, get the statistics and they have to put an application together. You know, you can get a 10, 20, 30 percent yeah. credit on your uh, FEMA flood insurance, which is dollars in your pocket. You can go to from 5 to 45 percent. Yeah. But, but I mean, the there are 2,000 houses that, qual that are yeah. fall under the flood insurance. Yeah. In and we, we would encourage the town to look into getting into the community rating system, which is the trigger for those yeah, well, that's flood what insurance the, that's what discounts. Jay is trying to do. Yeah. So. yeah, we are. And it's not just the beach that has floodplain issues uh -oh. or other parts of the town. And, I, and we've had some discussion of this at our monthly meetings. And when we have a monthly meeting and we have a speaker, we invite anyone in the community who's interested come. This isn't uh, st strictly reserved to residents of the precinct. So <coughs> if anyone has an interest in this area, come to our November meeting and listen to Jay. Because my point is, Hampton has got the greatest impact. You know, we have the most property that were impacted on the floodplain. So, you know, our, they went through the other towns, and the, nobody's got anything close to 2,000 policies. No, it's it's a very serious problem, and uh, <coughs> an enormous amount of the tax base is potentially at risk mm -hmm. if it isn't <coughs> shored up against what may be the inevitable coming of sea level yeah. a rise. Lot of, a, lot of, a lot of people that don't have the money, you will, you know, if you go without the flood insurance, you're totally at risk. So yeah. it's an yeah. important issue. So. And the, the, the new floodplain maps will take effect September 2015. And at that time, you, you may say, I don't need 
flood insurance because I don't have a mortgage. Try and sell your property with any lender is going to require flood insurance to uh, lend on the sale of property. Even, even if you have a cash buyer, I understand that there are new real estate transaction regulations imposed by the feds, which actually require flood insurance to take place at the time of the transaction. Am I misunderstanding that? My understanding of it is if you, you must have flood insurance as a matter of law if any federal insurance is involved in the mortgage. I don't mean flood insurance, I mean insuring the mortgage. Yeah, the bank's going to require you to carry flood insurance if they have a mortgage. So and in general, I would think up. any bank is going to require it. You, know, you, you may need it also just so to... So with a cash buyer, it wouldn't apply? No, I don't think you as a cash buyer have to have it. But um, you've got to take... It isn't just... You, how you own the property financially, it's how saleable the property you own is. Yeah, you're going constricting your, your, your market marketplace if yeah. you're only looking for a cash buyer. And <coughs> in this area, to take a minute, because it's really worth inquiring, under the flood insurance changes, if you would have flood insurance at this time, you may be able to grandfather it prior to <coughs> the new floodplain maps taking effect a year from now. So it behooves you to sit down with your insurance agent and make sure you're sitting down with someone who's on top of this. They aren't all up to speed on the nuances of the floodplain law changes. Grandfathering can be very significant because you can get very discounted rates which will hold going forward, as I understand it, even if you sold the property. And one of the other alarms other than you must carry it is for some people the cost of this insurance is going to be astronomical. If you are you know significantly below sea level on, on these new maps you're going to be below sea level financially when you find out what the premiums for these properties are going to be. You're talking limited coverage. It only goes to like $250,000 for a single family residence, but you could pay twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 for premium on that quarter of a million dollars worth of coverage <coughs> if you are substantially below sea level. Yeah. Uh, there are the primary most at-risk coatings in the maps are have the letter A or V connected to the zone ratings. So if you in the you can go to the assessor's office and you can check the maps at the assessor's office to see what part of the floodplain you are going to be rated into, and then go to your insurance carrier and find out is there anything you do right now to minimize the cost and risk going forward. And there are some things you can do, particularly if you are a primary residence owner. And, and as all things in life, it gets more complicated if it's not a primary residence. Now, aren't they all somewhere around at sea level? <coughs> Not necessarily. I don't know anybody below sea level. And a big point, Bob, is that there's <coughs> time frames to file appeals so that, you know, if, if you're dealing with the federal government you, and you file up an appeal a day too late, mm -hmm. you're out of luck. Yep. So the town should get involved in this because, yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, I have a question for Bob and Jim at the same time. This issue of the flood insurance is very complicated and not easily understood. Are there any plans to do a workshop? There's and been lots of workshops. Well, there's been a lot of workshops, but I don't know, maybe in regards to when the tax bills go out, people living in the floodplain, letting them know or doing something where you have a workshop where you actually have insurance professionals come in. I mean, we've heard a lot from conservation and those areas, but people don't pay attention to that. They had, they had two workshops with FEMA came to yeah. town, and one was at uh, Marston School in yeah. the in the gymnasium, and there was another one in Seabrook, I believe, <coughs> where FEMA came and yeah. talked about the floodplains, talked about the, and I think online, you can get the what 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 floodplain you're in now and what floodplain yeah. you're mm -hmm. going to be in in the future. Uh, so yes, the town has been on, on top of this working with the Conservation Committee, working with FEMA, working with the state delegation on what's going to happen and what we can do to, to mitigate this problem, what kinds of uh, 
because as Bob said, if people take certain actions now before it happens, it right. can help. But isn't the challenge there that those two workshops you referred to, people walked away not getting answers to their questions? Well, um, they because FEMA themselves weren't quite sure what, what, was, what well, the story was. Well, you, you, was, that right? you, you have that right. Okay. There was FEMA there. There was uh, UNH there. Um, and it was it was a little frustrating because the people putting on the presentation didn't have a really good presence of putting on the presentation in the first place. And then there were a lot of questions that they said, well, mm, we well, mm, mm. well, mm. And uh, so they're still working on it also. But yes, that is that is correct, what you said. I think Bob hit the nail on the head, though. You've got to talk to someone that actually knows, you know, an insurer that knows what's going well, on. Well, that's the problem. So right Nobody now, if I went to the town website and I had a question on this, I don't believe there's a link on the town website. Okay. You've got the FEMA website. Mm. Okay. Well, I guess my question will be, somebody going on the town website, would can we put it somewhere on the town website on where to go, even if it's only that FEMA link, but offer something there? Because I'm, I'm sure that there are people who haven't been in the loop. You know, some people wait till the last minute to pay attention. We're gonna we're gonna have people listening to us tonight that are gonna go. Wow, I should have paid attention well, to this. Jennifer Gilbert is the state coordinator for the FEMA, and mm -hmm. that's who you spoke with. Yeah. There isn't this state that one has clear answers, insurance. even FEMA. FEMA is not mm -hmm. private insurance; it's so. federal insurance. The private, the insurance industry doesn't take flood insurance. It's the federal government that provides it. Right. But well, there's no point that's, talking to I guess I guess that's what I'm getting to is that sooner or later we need to drill down to if the citizens of this town where we have so many people that are in lowlands have a question mm -hmm. that we do better than say, Well, I don't know when it hasn't landed yet. Well, but you're gonna be paying more, so just open up your pocketbook. I guess no, that's, no, that's FEMA that was saying. What they that. Were saying no, I know we're not saying it, but I'm saying no. what FEMA was saying is until the rules are finalized, you know, they mm -hmm. can't give you complete answers. The other thing is the town should consider on the planning side to bring the, you know, the building code into conformance with hmm. what flood insurance requires. That'll be a bigger job. Michael. I think your idea of having something, a pointer, a, a, a link on the web, town website is a wonderful idea because I went to the precinct meetings a couple of times. <laughs> this, I think this was last year we first started talking about yeah. this maybe even longer ago than that. And I remember one of the things he said about the grandfather clause. That's a great idea if, if you can qualify for that. And I, I, even after going to your meetings and listening to everybody talk about it, were your meetings, and they were all good people, I wouldn't have a clue what to do about the grandfather thing. Do I talk to my insurance agent? Do I talk to somebody in the federal government? I think we need all the help we can get on this. I mean, I'm not saying I'm uninformed, but I, I don't think it's readily available to the average person like you say in that mm -hmm. I think we need to have a pointer on the website. Well, the, the question, Michael, is not whether it's readily available. The question is whether it's available at all. Well, yeah. yeah. And of course, we can't put a link to something that isn't available. Right. And that's the problem. Oh, that's the problem? Yes. I, I think probably the best way to approach it is to start out by saying, when was my house built? And this is a serious question because the floodplain requirements start with the creation of FEMA in the 60s. And you may get a, an advantage by predating the adoption of any floodplain by, uh, by the uh, federal government. Then you have to find out, is, you have to determine, is it a primary residence? Was the residence, if built after the floodplains were first adopted, modified, and if at that time it was in compliance with the community codes for construction, and you can prove that, that may be to your advantage when you're discussing the cost of this insurance. That's what they call the grandfather? That's yeah. where the grandfathering comes yeah. in. The, the, the year the house was built, prior to the FEMA plans being implemented. And these points you're bringing up, Bob, these are also not factually known. They're like generally believed that probably true, right? Uh, these things, they seem to be saying, are accurate at be. this point. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 
the bottom line is there are things you can do, but if you delay and don't do them, you may pay a price. Yeah. The whole idea is if you're in an advantage zone now and you're going to, into a less advantage zone after the adoption of MAPS September 2015, you may be able to grandfather into the more advantage zone that you're now in if you get the insurance prior to the September 15 deadline. I think what you're trying to say is you want to get involved before the rules get finalized. This yeah. is the time to get involved. Yeah. And it's complicated, but it's not insurmountable. You basically got to know. They'll, they'll cooperate with you yeah. at this point. Yeah. yeah, very much so. They will give you the information they have to the extent they have it complete. But I would say the greatest difficulty probably will be in dealing with your insurance agent because they have an awful lot of learning on their learning curve. So you're going to have to work that out and be satisfied that the agent is on top of it. And not all agents, you know, some agents are going to have more at-risk properties in their book of business than others, so they may be more up to speed on it. These are things you're going to have to work out. But whatever it is you choose to do, do it now. But this is a Thank town you. slash village issue. Not a, I don't think this is a budget committee issue. We're just talking Definitely 20 not. minutes on this topic. Definitely not a budget committee I mean, it's just a 20 minutes on this topic. It's, it's either a town leadership or a village precinct leadership or a combination of both. If, 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 who, who is it that we have to contact? How do we understand what the issues are and communicate them out to the people who own the property at the beach? And who many of them are not even here during the winter time, but are away in some other state, perhaps. Uh, I mean, it's, it's the it's a issue of insurance law clearly says it's a federal issue, so it really yeah. doesn't belong even in the town. It belongs to the feds. So contact your your federal representative, which is presently Carol Carol Schaefer. Contact your your federal senator, which is currently Jim Cheney, and I'm sure they'll be very responsive as ever. I, <laughs> I excuse me. I I appreciate you bringing the information in as a report. And what's going on, but I'd like to move yeah, on. Certainly move point. on. I would only comment that when we're asked to make a report, yeah. we are reporting on issues concerning the representation we have on the people we're reporting for. Correct. So it very much belongs at this meeting as long as you ask us to <coughs> report. Yeah. And on that note, uh, I will have the village district numbers at our next meeting. <laughs> all right, I'm going to move on from here.